Peter for the one morning. So you got all the other years. I did two times. We're going to call to order a meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Town of Deerfield. Uh, we'll hold a public hearing July 6, 2017 at 7 p.m., room 107 at the Deerfield offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., on the application of Brent Banus of 10 Mill Valley, Mill Valley Road, Hadley, Mass., for a special permit for construction of self-storage at 247 Greenfield Road, South Deerfield as per plan submitted. And before we get started, there's just a couple of items of housekeeping. The first is that there are only four members present this evening. So if we hear your application and it goes to a vote, you'd have to get a unanimous vote. Uh, so up to the point where we vote, we would allow you to withdraw your application without prejudice, but, uh, but you would need postpone all four. Or you, sure, or you could, or you could withdraw and, and yeah. come back to us when we hopefully have more members. But uh, that's the first order of business. And then secondly, Bernie has something. Right, I'd like to make uh, you aware that uh, the applicant is a relative of mine. And, uh, no, not the applicant, the property owner. Property owner. Property owner is the uh, relative of mine, and uh, I agree to vote in an unbiased manner with no economic gain. Perfect. Does anyone have any objections to? No. Great. Uh, well, one thing, Ben. Yeah. Before we, if they want to withdraw, right? Um, and the question, they can withdraw the application or they can ask for a postponement until we get the f another member here present to, to Before we hear. But that person is going to have to review the, the tape of the meeting and get up to date, and you can miss one meeting. Okay, that is correct. Okay, so I just want to make sure that so you folks understand have, what Mr. Decker just described. So if you if you wish to postpone and wait for another board member, they can also be sort of briefed on the plan and get up to speed, and then they would be able to vote at the next meeting. Right, we basically come back and meet present. I guess I'm uh, what I'm understanding is they might not even have to present if you present this evening, but we postpone a vote we could get another board member yeah, if the guy reviewed up to speed the on their own the minutes etc et you, you can miss one meeting and still vote at right. the second meeting right. okay as long as you declare to read all the minutes and reviewed all the plans perfect so with that being said I, I'd like to turn it over to you folks to kind of give us a presentation of, uh, of what you're planning to do yeah, so uh, my name's Henry Cropsey, and I'm the attorney for uh, Ben Bainer. Do you want to come up and sit at the table while I'm sure. here? Yep. I can spell that for you. Yeah, so how do you spell that? C-R-O-P is in Peter S-E-Y. S-E-Y. Yep. Great, thank you. Should I speak into this thing? Does that help at all? Or? Uh, it will help for the folks watching, but for us it's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're, we, we like to shut it off. Yeah, we'd like to. <laughs> Uh, with me, I have John Ceruta, who's the engineer who's prepared and submitted the uh, application here. And with the board's permission, what I'd like to do is to kind of break this into two parts. There are a number of criteria that need to be considered for a special permit application. And so what I'd like to do to start with is have John pick up with what I'll call the, the technical side, namely uh, the various zoning bylaws that are in the play and how all those issues are being satisfied by the site plan and materials that he's presenting tonight. And then I'll go after he's finished with his summary and answer any questions you might have, then I'll uh, address the other more legal aspects of the uh, special permit issue. So without anything more than that, I'd like to turn it over to John and have John talk about technical stuff. Thanks, Henry. Um, so as Henry said, I'm John Ceruta. I'm with Ceruta Engineering. Uh, I'm the project engineer. This is Bill Ceruta. He is uh, the chief engineer and the owner of Ceruta Engineering. But together we worked on this project. And um, but first I'd like to just go over some of the site characteristics and just so you have a background of the site. Um, so the proposed work includes the demolition of the existing buildings on site and the construction of four proposed buildings, which range in size from 7,500 square feet to 16,250 square feet. Um, it's generally a flat site, 
Um, it drains towards the back, towards um, the rear of the site. And um, as far as other site characteristics, we can show on that plan, it shows the uh, zoning regulations that were either met or exceeded. So um, all the setback requirements, things of that nature, have all been posted on that plan. Um, we also have, well, I wanted to go into uh, traffic flow and safety, talk about that, where the parking requirements have been met. Uh, we need 19 spaces for that site, and we have 22 proposed spaces. Um, the adequacy of utilities, it's really minimal impact of utilities um, for that site. We, that site is hooked up to public water, and we have, <coughs> excuse me, um, we have septic for the site as well, which that has been met. Um, impacts of natural environment. Um, so all the stormwater management standards have been met or exceeded for the project, and the post-development conditions are improvement over the pre-development conditions. Um, that's addressed in a lot more detail in the stormwater management report, if you guys would like to look at that later. Um, but as far as any other requirements for the special permit, I think Henry is going to go over that. Um, mm -hmm. Would you like to? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess uh, first off, I'm a little unfamiliar with how you guys work up here. Would it be helpful if John got up? He's got some other boards here, you know, placards we can put up on easels and kind of walk through uh, the plan in greater detail. Or are you guys satisfied with what you've, you know, the, the shall I say, the blue and white in front of you? So I think we, sh we could probably go through. Uh, yeah, I can show you the plan in a little bit more detail. Um, existing uh, old gables, so to speak. And uh, that's what it used to be. Okay, okay. You're, you're probably going to be somewhat in line with the garage that's back there before you're going to start your structures. Am I correct? Because it's, I don't know what the depth is of the existing building that are on the site. I don't know how far back they said. I have to get back to what happened. The existing plan, it's shown that there, but well, I don't have anything but this scale it, okay? It's, I see it here, but basically you don't have a superimposed one over over this okay, so to show you how it would set. Because it would be closer yeah, I'm just the proposed to buildings. So the proposed buildings, if you, if you can compare it with the... Um, the layout for the right here. Let's you can see that they're almost about the same distance, but we're well beyond the 50 foot front setback. I don't let me let me clarify something here a little bit. The 
setbacks for all the buildings are, are dictated by building code zoning enforcement, okay? You can't change the setback requirements. Well, I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to understand no, I'm where just they saying. are. He's got two choices here for setbacks now. He can use the setback that's for the existing building. This is by zoning. He can use the average setback, which is the front of that building, or he can go back 60 feet, which is the requirement in that district, I believe. Okay? So those are the two, two options that he has. So if you'd like to measure, you probably can tell him how far back that is by drawing. Sure. Well, I put the, the frontage setback here. So we have a 50-foot front setback. We're well, well beyond that. I mean, we're at, it's about 85 feet from... Okay. But that's what I was asking, yeah. what the yeah. distance between the road and the fence. So yeah, the closest building is 85 feet from the road. So if we have this 55, or 50 feet plus this 35. So this office building is the closest to the road. These two buildings, I think they come back on. What's that say, Bernie? 30, 65? 65. 65. 65 and 35 used to be 100 feet. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. That's from the front. Uh, this is the front setback. So, yeah, 65 feet from the edge of the road here no. to um, the front of that building is 100 feet. So, yeah. I was using this uh, front setback as what we were gauging it from. So. Okay, but I mean, the point is that the, before you see the buildings, they're going to set back 100 feet from Route 5 and 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, that was what I was trying to figure out. Okay. That's Thank a better you. answer. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at, you know, the, the existing and trying to figure, I don't know if this is the same scale as that or not. Yes, yes. Yeah. Look, if you want a ruler, I got you one. You want it's ruler? 30 to 1. Yeah, yeah it's 30 to 1. Are you trying to figure out what the distance the existing, the existing building. building is? Yeah. It's roughly about the same. Um, yeah, if you just have a scale, I can show you real quick. Well, he found me. He says 30 to 1. Yep. 31 is, is the scale of the drawing, but if we have a, uh, a ruler, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I think it's it's just about 100 feet to where the existing building is. Yeah, you're probably close to right. <laughs> I normally would have a scale with me, but... Yeah, I know you. Uh, you couldn't show up in your jeans, right? I couldn't show up in my jeans, so I don't have a skill. Well, maybe we may have some other questions about the design elements, sure. but, but maybe we'll move forward with your part because I think we do have some questions about uh, where sure. this fits in the zoning. So, uh, so why don't I pick up with that then? I'm, uh, basically, actually. I'm used to standing up. With That's fine. Please, that if okay you're comfortable, you? yeah. Okay. So I can kind of show what's sure, going on. So basically, um, uh, one of the important criteria obviously to put the board tonight is uh, a special permit is designed to provide flexibility rather than like a way to set the laws for say you can retain or have a lot of the right or not a lot at all. A special permit is to give the board the discretion to try to fit the use to the location. So the important aspect of all this stuff is what's the neighborhood. What's the best I can do? You have to count. So here in the neighborhood, um, as you're all familiar with, is essentially commercial. We've got Douglas Auctioneers right next door. We've got Greg's Auto on the other side. We've got Richard's Auto across the street. This is going to be back further. Right down that new area. So in that, done it, this is what I wanted to kind of show is uh, I wanted to give you a visual. This is my client's existing location in uh, Hadley, Massachusetts. And so in essence, this is what we're proposing to build here. Um, aesthetically, it's going to be you know, what I would call high-end self-storage facility. You know what I mean? But we've all seen the ones that aren't so attractive. But this one is what we're talking about in this one. The plans all show that this, I call this kind of like a house concept, because it's, visually it looks more like a house than a self-storage facility. Uh, and the units are going to be discreetly tucked behind the house. So the house is actually the closest thing to the street that you're going to see. So in, a, in that regard, it actually is kind of in keeping with like 
it's actually, to my mind, it's going to be more aesthetically pleasing than the uh, antiques dealers stores down the street or some of the other facilities in the immediate area. Um, the actual, uh, and I do want to be clear, the actual um, facade is going to be a house structure, but my clients are leaning more towards a, a fully clappered look rather than a stained stone facade on this one. And, uh, you know, if you're interested, we have some examples of what that might look like. But in essence, the point that I want to have uh, come across clearly is that this is a, what I would consider to be a, a high-end self-storage facility from a visual perspective. You know, this is going to be, if anything, it's going to bring the neighborhood up versus some uses, and this is where the special permit comes into play, is you're trying to use a special permit to site uses that are in keeping with that neighborhood. And if anything, might help bring up the neighborhood because uh, I'm sure you know, this, this particular property has been, in essence, vacant for quite a few years now. Um, the property across the street is for sale, and that's essentially vacant right now, too. So, uh, you know, I would look at this as, you know, from a special permit perspective, is this something that's going to be arguably at least equal to the neighborhood that we're in or better? And obviously that decision is for you, and I'm happy to respond to any particular specific questions, but my point would be that I think this is definitely improve, certainly an improvement over what's there right now on the ground. And it's going to be, to my mind, visually an improvement to most everything that's in the immediate area. Uh, then the other aspect of this that, you know, ostensibly is part of the consideration is, you know, what's this do as far as services? I mean, are we talking about putting, uh, you know, elderly housing in here, which is going to generate a requirement for ambulance service and maybe EMTs and things like that? The answer is no. So from a service perspective, this is a low service usage for the property. It's not like condo development that's going to bring a lot of small children who've got to go to the public schools and need to be educated. It's really from services, it's not, you know, it's not like a car wash, it's going to use lots of water. It's not going to be using pretty much much of anything except simply being there, you know. Uh, and the other thing it's going to bring as far as the town is concerned is that um, this project is going to be around a $2 million project. So from a tax revenue perspective, this is going to be a positive for the town. And from an employment perspective, this is going to, they're going to be hiring around five to six new employees. So that's from a job perspective, they're bringing tax revenues and new employment opportunities to this, to the town, which is a win-win all around most of the time. You know? uh, so any specific questions on any of the issues that I'm addressing at this point. Are any of the units going to be climate controlled? Uh, climate controlled units in this facility? I don't no. think so. No. No, no climate control in this facility. <coughs> okay. At least that's not part of the plan right now. <coughs> well, I was just interested in whether or not. Yeah. I think there may be some need for it in the area. Okay, well, that's good to bear in mind. <laughs> I had a couple of questions yes. off the application. So yep. the, it's checked that the site plan review application is pending. Yes, that's before the planning board on Monday. Planning okay. board on Monday. Monday. We, we did this to get things moving. Sure. And so also special permit application to the planning board pending? There's no special permit before the planning board. It's site plan yeah, review. It's just site plan review. Okay. Plan well, review. for some reason, that one's checked yes also. Well, yeah. they, in error. Accidents okay. happen. Yes, of course. <laughs> um, now you're also going to conservation commission. <coughs> so that's under review right now. That's already in front that's of it. Right. It's already gone. Already mm -hmm. been in front of conservation okay. commission. Okay. That's being. That's all being handled. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got so, that from Priscilla. Sure. So, uh, a major issue that that we're having as a board right now, and I know that that. Uh, Mr. Kalaszewski wants to assure us that it's not an issue, is that all the zoning books that we have don't show this use as an allowed use, right? even under special permit. Right. It was voted in in uh, April, April of 2016, 
I can't lay my hands on that, but I know it returns. I have it. Again. You've got it? Okay. You have it? Because yeah. I've seen it. Well, sure. It. And it was the one no, you don't need it, actually. I brought all these other can, parts of the zone. You can go subject to that. Anytime. Anytime. But I have seen it. I can. Okay. If, uh, I think we can't, no, we we through, can't find it. Okay. Yeah, we have one of the paths you want to go down. Yeah. Glass. And now they're. Now, <laughs> now I know that feeling. Give them the hard time now. One of the paths you got to go down. You got to go down the path of who can rent these things and preventing hazardous waste being stored in there, fuel oils, things like that. And they need to explain a little bit of that for you. So, because I know that question is going to come up with the viewers that are on the TV right now. And what is going to be stored, what's permissible, what's not permissible to be stored in there? Uh, well, I'll bring my clients up to talk about Brent, that a little bit. Brent probably could answer that better. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he probably can. But basically, uh, I'll yeah, bring Brent up. But that, that's, we're that's, not going to be allowing you know, any. Bob wants to know specifically, and I agree with him, rules and regulations by contract. What do you allow in Hadley to be put in there, for example? Uh, I'm really bringing you on the spot. Yeah. I could have brought a lease in, but we specifically do not allow combustibles, flammables, propane tanks. Yeah. For obvious boats. reasons. That's right on the lease. With boats? We don't store boats. Somebody couldn't rent one of those, put a boat in it? No. We do store cars. And you're, would they have gasoline in them? Yes. No, we could I have no problem not allowing cars because it's not a big demand for it. I think we've got probably have. Eight hundred units at a current facility. Probably about two hundred cars. If you could write that into your. Well, we, you know, what I'm getting at is, is we want to make sure that, you know, when we try to think of anything that's going to be a hazard mm -hmm. and causes a problem down the road. Yep. Yeah, well, well, the good news there is that our interests are in alignment because we don't want anything in these buildings that could either cause a fire or cause hazardous materials contamination leak because it, the DEP looks to the landowner first and foremost to fix any problem that happens. And so we, we you know, I've helped draft the lease for, for Brent and we're, you know, very careful not to allow anything in there that's going to cause any hazardous materials or contamination or explosives or things like that because it's just bad for it's just bad for us. So the, if I understand it, these units are going to be wired for a light, and that's about all that you can do with it. You're going to have an overhead light so you can see what you've got in your storage unit. No, typically self-storage units don't have lights. There's no lights. No. Okay, no lights, no electricity in the units. No, no fire suppression. No, I don't believe by code no. right. fire. Right. Just fire. Okay, sure. I just want to make sure. Right. So this, this is a non combustible it's a metal building, building not combustible. And somebody can't turn around and go in there and start running table saws or anything else. And not if they don't have That's the other issue. <laughs> You're doing a good job tonight. That's the other issue is allowing any business to operate out of there. That's my point. <laughs> okay, there you go. And we have that on our lease, too, our current lease. No okay. business is just I'll give it to We do have electricians who store their supplies in there. Well, that's different. That's Bob different. is referring to using his warehouse space. Bob is referring to making kitchen cabinets or whatever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. This is the one. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for digging that one up. <laughs> that's the certified copy from your perfect town, town clerk or whatever, showing that it's already been approved by the. Right. Thank you. The article passed. And the signatures are on the bottom part. It doesn't tell it exactly what the articles are. Okay. Trust me, it's passed. Actually, <laughs> Ronald Reagan was it. With the Russians with trust but verify. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's pretty simple. Whatever vote you take, whichever way you're going, it's always subject to that being part of the regulations. That's it. So. Well, 
I do know that Didi got the bylaws changed in 19 in 2016 to allow uh, other than industrial uses and industrial parts. And specifically to allow the self storage over there. Yeah, but they already had self service in the book in 2015. That was already allowed in the plant yeah, industry. That was, that was that one spot, and they didn't do it anywhere else. They did it in give them some history background. They did it to pacify a few people who were trying to do self-storage. Mm -hmm. And nobody, but nobody, because there's no spot to go over there. Yeah, well, anyway, Didi, we got the bylaw changed so Didi could, could allow commercial uses mm -hmm. with a special exactly. permit. And, and, and uh, in 16, we, we got it. No, that's what we did in 16, but I think you, you, you're probably very right that that's when we passed the other. So. Please, thanks. Yeah. So yeah. without, if without you're knowing wrong, which article and you know the number, and that doesn't really well, move to the other side of the table. About. Rich isn't saying anything down there. <laughs> Let him speak up. <laughs> he comes to the, down to the southern part of town once. You're wondering once exactly how to pronounce yeah. the motion. Right? <laughs> well, so no, I'm I'm just this doesn't really tell us other than that Article Seven passed. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, right. I'm not actually sure that the town has gotten around to. Figuring out what section number it's going to be. Sure. Well, we haven't it updated our zoning book since 2015. That's what they're all was reading. allowed within commercial yeah. two. Yeah, we've got. Yeah, you can't go by it because it yeah, hasn't yeah. been updated. Right. Which one? Which year did you have? Did you bring it with it? <laughs> did you bring it with it? Yeah, it was simply an insert in it, but I don't think it had a section. Yeah. It's just a. You're right. We have not updated our books at all, and obviously we didn't update it online. We just researched that earlier. So that's not a big issue for tonight, because no matter what happens, you can't violate the zoning bylaw. Right. Right. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, but, but I, I, I trust that that is the case. I just it may be that we need yeah. verification. Or if you want me to go, to you guys talk about other things. I'll go dig through some files. All right. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any other questions about the design or about the legal portion? So I have some letters if, if you want to go to some mm -hmm. letters from sure. the town members. We got. Ben, was that Article 7? It said that? Article 7. No, right there. Article 7. Article 7. And some other numbers too. Mm -hmm. Go through these. So we got a, a letter from the police chief, who says lighting, cameras, security gate, and fencing, as outlined in his memo to me, dated six two seventeen. See attached. And I've got a note from Mr. Banus to the police chief. It's over here, the tools. This is special town for two zero one six. The following will be basic lighting and security layout regarding a proposed right. development. We gladly welcome any comments. Right. Lighting mm -hmm. fixtures will be placed throughout the aisles, building mounted, as well as some pole lighting to cover the entire perimeter. Care will be taken to ensure that any lighting does not infringe upon neighbors or vehicle traffic along the roadway. Security, in addition to having an on-site office staff, and we should ask about hours, or oh, we've got hours here, uh, facility will have the following security features. Personalized gate codes will be issued to allow to access to and from the facility. Standard gate access hours will be seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Exceptions will be made to allow for situations that necessitate additional time. However, this will be closely monitored. For example, at our current location, which is approximately 575 tenants, only five have extended hours. Surveillance cameras will be placed to provide coverage in every aisle as well as the entire perimeter. And six foot fencing will be installed around the entire perimeter. We've got no comment from the Board of Assessors. We have a comment from the Select Board. The Board, the board supports this project. Kay Camosa described the planning board's considerations and are in line with their goal. From Wendy, the town administrator. And that 
looks like it for our letters. So, do we have any other particular questions? I mean, I know it's, it, it looks like a really comprehensive plan. Thank you guys very much for Certainly. giving us so much. It's a, I'm curious if this plan was shared with these other entities, police chief, fire chief, they yeah, have all been distributed. They've sure seen all of this yeah, great. Yeah, for the site plan, the site plan application. Perfect. All the other boards have to get copies. Great. Well, our last applicant did not share any site plans, so we had an issue with that. Um, the only thing they didn't receive is the nice color. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a rendering of what it was going to look like. I thought that yeah, really took. <laughs> it's going to be very similar. How about colors? Are you going to stick with the same color scheme? Uh, we've got some pictures of different You haven't really decided on colors. Well, we yeah, sure. Lighter tones. You know, this board has encouraged applicants before to kind of bring their their palette within kind of the town's feeling, right. generally within the, the well, town that's center. That's but that's what I think we're kind of talking about. Is uh, yeah, that looks. Removing the, uh, the stone is pretty much the concept, and trying to be more in keeping with Deerfield's more of a fully collaborative mm -hmm. structure. You know. No, I think that that's has kind a nice of a plan. Nice element. You know, I can, I can make a phone call. Maybe I can find somebody that's got a warrant. Okay. Well, how do you feel, Mr. Decker, about? Dick seems to think that we can vote on it. I think we can. Contingent. That I think we can. Is, that that has in fact want, been. If you want to go to that extent. Right. And I further think that if it wasn't a special permit that's allowed by by the statute that with the unique characteristics of this piece of property, the applicant could probably demonstrate that it was actually a hardship as to what they were going to do with this piece of property. Because there's no sewer, it has a high water table through there, and uh, it, it's not conducive to have condos or any residential development there. Uh, the restaurant that was there uh, moved across the street in 1955 or 6, okay, and uh, it hasn't had a restaurant there, and had, the only use it's had is a small little antique shop in the 70s, right, and, and they had one residential unit upstairs and a little real estate office out there in the front of the lighthouse. But, you know, I would think that uh, we could vote it. We need to put those restrictions on, uh, but if, if it was necessary, um, I would support a variance, but the application wasn't done for a variance. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I don't think that that property is unique. You can't do very much with it. I mean, you might be able to park cars on it uh, for a car dealership or something like that, but you can't, you can't really put a uh, multi-unit building under a restaurant. You're never going to pass the, uh, the septic designs and everything else. I don't believe. I'm no, not an engineer. Those are all valid points. I mean, basically, the reason we didn't couch this as a variance, quite simply, is that with the new zoning bylaw, the special permit is a much lower threshold sure. to try to overcome. And so we're going for the, and again, the town is clearly looking for something like this, or else why would they pass the special permit right. option in the first place? So I agree with you, there's, you know, there's plenty of opportunity to say that there's a hardship associated with this, but uh, that's a but the application but the applications for special permit which is a which is a lower standard lower threshold so um, uh, and to um, well we can grant the permit uh, subject to the conservation of the, the planning board and well, it's, always, uh, yeah, it's always conditioned on you know, the regulations as to what's going to be allowed and we don't, we don't want to see any businesses operating out of the little clusters are having a condo out. Right. Uh, to, uh, if we don't have any more specific questions, we could ask the public for any comment, too, or? Yeah. I don't think there's very many here. No. So I guess what, what I'd like to do then is, mm -hmm. is, unless we have any more questions, we could go to the public and ask if there are any comments in favor of this proposal, or any comments in opposition. I'm in favor of this Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Duly noted. And 
All right. Well, I think maybe we should have a conversation amongst ourselves then. Yeah, we can we can vote to grant the permit, subject to the, the research of the, the, the actual statute, the, the, the town meeting uh, articles that it is that it is a, a, a use that's been permitted as a special permit under right. the zoning bylaw. It certainly and seems like they've done yeah, a and comprehensive. We plan. can further, but we're going to restrict it. You can't condo it out, right? And and no businesses to operate out of it. It's just limited non-commercial uh, storage for personal items, et cetera. You're not going to be bringing in anything, any industrial. We don't want to see any industrial waste there. We don't want to see gasoline or solvents or paints or, or any of that stuff there. You know, people want to want to start put their furniture there. Well, hey, that's fine. And I would prefer that if there was any car store there that they drain the gasoline out of them so they less than the fire hazards. Would you want that to be in the you He doesn't have any problem. Would you prefer to say no car storage or or I would rather say that uh, if they drain the gasoline out, right? We're Is not that realistic have, I we're not gonna have the uh, potential of uh, an explosion. I think Bob's right. I think storage with gasoline removed because I could see somebody like Bernie dropping off his Model A over there. He's been working on it for 60 years and hasn't got it back together. Um, right? You get snowmobiles, you got motorcycles, you got lawnmowers. Yeah, you drain the gas out of the stuff and it's not really hazardous. Rich, you got the same. <laughs> I'm appreciative of the choir over here. He's going to burn <laughs> full. <laughs> uh, I, I can't, excuse me, but I, I can't find that Warren article, but I can fine. absolutely assure you that. If you take a vote tonight, it could be subject to that warrant article had, had sure. being passed. Okay. Well, actually, I can't go into legal effect without it because without you it, can't move forward without it. You can't move forward. Exactly. If, if the article, if the warrant article didn't pass, there's no decision. So, so what, what has to happen is tomorrow morning, you have to come in here and see Barbara Hancock, mm -hmm. see if you can get a certified that is correct. town meeting activity and to see what it says and have her certify it and then yep. she can she can give that to dick and or in to the selectman's office and when ben signs the uh when ben signs the permits okay. and whatever I, I, be I believe it's in our computers on the l drive but i can't get to it i don't have the password that's fine that's the only reason you're, i couldn't find it you're on a needs and all basis <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the only other thing I was thinking about yeah, conditions would be, um, I, my suggestion would be vis-a-vis -vis the business that you don't you want to have the condition be uh, prohibiting the operation of any other business besides a storage business. So you can't. You I mean, if you want to change your use, I think what you're worried about is whether uh, I'm not worried about anything. You know, somebody, you know, somebody operating a business out of. Yeah. That becomes subject to, you would yes, ask, you I'm know. worried about that because that becomes subject to zoning enforcement. And I don't like really beating people up anymore than I have to. So you're right. It's a zoning enforcement scenario. Well, right. the special permit to use these buildings is going to be limited to the storage of uh, personal, personal property of non-industrial nature. Yeah. Okay. And I know. Yeah. Did, you guys, did you guys talk about hours? Oh, he's got something there, seven to seven. Seven, to seven. And in, in Hadley, he's got people who got five people who got access after hours. Mm -hmm. See, I did read this stuff. <laughs> 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 the next thing is, I'm just being the devil's advocate here because I'm not miss anything. You talk about security. So uh, Chief Pachert wrote a letter that. Okay, it, you got that. that it, uh, yeah, we're going to we're going to incorporate those things into the. That's part of the special. Yeah. yeah. Recommendations from the police chief or whatever they have to be part of. Do you have any other suggestions? No, I'm just going and shooting from the hip here. You know, you're, you're guiding me here. This is tough. Anyway. Was there anything else on the plan that jumped out at anybody? It looks like. Well, this um, office space. Mm -hmm. 
Is it going to be limited to what you're doing, or we find out six months from now you've got a real estate agency going in there? No, it's just for our personal use. Well, I would like to see that put in there that would be limited to what they're going to do. Well, what you do is you put it in the way you put it in there, is they've got to come back to amend right. their special permit should there be a change of use. Right. Mm -hmm. That's on. Well, Richard, I have one question for you. The, and I'm not an expert on the um, blacktop and how much blacktop and how much uh, impervious surfaces it meets. It meets it, and that that is meets subject or to exceeds. The, yep. It meets it. Uh, the, in, the impervious surfaces. Yep. It meets the drainage requirements. That all is coming board a planning board on the tenth. Okay. But he's not looking for any variance. And Mr. Ceruta over there is, uh, yeah, did we're, the, we're did the site work. Both of them. We, mm -hmm. we exceed the state standards. Yeah. They're using previous papers. And yeah. They're using, they're using stuff the water goes through. Okay. Yeah. It's actually on that board, but it's on yeah. the uh, zoning regulations. It shows the amount of pervious cover allowed and the amount that, of that's My question is, does it meets the code yes 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 yeah, okay and that's the requirement we're going to want is to make sure that it meets all the applicable call and and you send codes. that to the planning board yeah. that it has to meet that and the planning board is the one that's reviewing it exactly. for site plan review mm -hmm. so it's part of that before yeah. we even get to site plan review to answer the question we're not asking for any variances from side yard yeah. setbacks or any of the other zoning requirements we're Client with or exceed all of the. All you're asking clients. is that we allow it because the bylaw says it can be allowed as a special it's permit. Special permit. It's, a use, it's really a use issue more than anything else. Yeah, with, with conditions that yeah. are amicable for the town of Deerfield. In other words, nobody there at 3 o'clock in the morning. So, well, do you want to restrict this? Do you want to give out that code to five people? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bannis, do we have any concerns about those extended hours? I mean, well, I mean, it's only four or five people that are going to access it. It's not really going to bother me. What, that. what hours do you have down there? I, I believe seven, seven to seven, seven was in the uh, note to the police chief. But what time it is now? Yeah. I was just going to say the only people who have, again, I mean, spoke earlier. We said there was like 800. Minutes. We have like 600. Five of them. And one of them is a DA, I think, Northampton District Attorney. Uh, another one is like an electrician uh, who will be doing the electrical work. Uh, and we closely monitor it. So I don't know what the percentage is on five out of 600, but it's not high. And we don't want people in and out of there in the middle of the night either. Because you're not staffing for that. No. So I think the way I look at it is it's kind of analysis. 7 a.m. 7 p.m. are operating hours. And if you're in a pharmacy and you have a pharmacist, remember I call up and get my lunch in to put a prescription after hours. That's kind of what we're talking about. It's going to be a 7 a.m. 7 p.m. Uh, operation. It's going to be gated, correct? Yes. yes. So you're going to close the gates at 7 o'clock and open the gates at 7 o'clock. Electronically, you're going to punch your code when you show up. And the gate will probably yep. always be gate will open. It won't open if it's not. It won't open until 7 a.m. Right. Unless he's got a space open code. throughout daylight hours. Or. Yep. But you got to hit the code to get in. Oh, so it's open in that you can open it, but the gate is physically shut. During yep. So you pull up to a keypad, and the gate opens, Perfect. and it shuts behind you, and the next person would have to hit a code. Perfect. And then also, some facilities don't have. Uh, access code to exit, the gate will just automatically open, but we're going to set it up where you have to hit your code so we know where people are coming and going. Then we want to make sure that we know ammunition, fireworks, or any of that stuff. Hazardous materials. Yeah, hazardous materials. Because a district attorney might lock up some evidence. <laughs> Another requirement. I'm making these up as we go along. Yeah. Another requirement is that you post emergency telephone numbers in the building. And then book with all the people at rent that it be access to the police department or what have you so that it's a problem. Yeah. They can get hold of people. Some sort of a uh, information system 
that if uh, there's a problem with a particular unit, that the police will have access to, to get at it, well, find out who the people are. It's more contact of a fire person. department access. Yeah, they, what do you do with contact contact fire, fire department access? Mm -hmm. in the Currently, the uh, Howley Fire Department has a coat to get it. Mm -hmm. so to the facility. Yeah. To get to the facility, yeah. yeah. If they need to get it. So, so if there's Not something wrong in the unit. They've never had to. What's that? If something wrong in the unit, they just break the lock and go in? They've never had to, I guess. If We've had police that wanted to go into a unit. Uh, yeah, but then you're in a Right. So uh, we talked about yeah. it. Then they have to have a lock. We just can't open up a unit. It's like Because I could be sued for that. We wouldn't want that. Fire is a different story. It's fire is public safety issues. But the police thing just the, just the fire department have access through that gate, that's all. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and the last item I'm going to pull out of my head, because I'm working against these guys here, is no outside storage. Oh, that's <laughs> Okay. That's obvious. Yeah. In other words, you can't leave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you can't leave stuff outside. But that's something too, and Hadley, they, they didn't require of me, but ooh, that's a policy of our own. We don't allow outside storage. Did, 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 did somebody can't go and pile up a bunch of junk until yeah. a unit opens up. Yeah. 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 Doesn't look good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I have a bit of a list here. Should I just go through it? Sure. And Read so it. we have operate, uh, hours of operation 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, security is subject to Chief Pachurik's recommendations. Uh, this, the, our granting of this, should we choose to do so, would be subject to the fact that the zoning allows it. Right. Uh, no, someone said no condo, but no. I don't want them condoing out the units. In. Oh, no where, subletting. Where no somebody's going to be able to. No subletting yeah. is that living in. I don't think Brent's going to allow that in the way. <laughs> but some people have talked about condo self storage. Right. Do you do leases on those? Yes. Yes. So you do leases and month to month both? Or all leases? All leases for every year, yeah. Well, then there's no subletting. Yeah, it's, and that's currently on our current lease, no so living in a unit. If you, know. you have to have an auction when somebody doesn't pay the rent. Uh, you don't pull the stuff out and put it in the yard. No, we advertise it. We open up the door. And, and, and people look at it. Day. They can't walk inside you and start just pulling it. Like on TV. Okay. I <laughs> <laughs> just want to make sure that you're, you're not going to You're not going to come over here and start auctioning the stuff off. <laughs> so, so no outside business is operating in the units? Like out of the yeah. unit, It's right? just residential storage. Right. Like actively yeah. running a business. Right. right. But again, we have like electricians that store. Of course, their they stuff. can yeah. store their yeah. things. Yeah. Right. So no. Uh, so storage of personal property, no hazardous material. Oh well, yeah, that's one thing we have. Uh, to cars are to be stored without fuel. If there's to be a change of use, we have to come back for a new application with a new application. Um, posting emergency contacts in the buildings or on the buildings. So that should be on the building for fire department. Yeah. Actually, you know, this is a little bit different storage, but normally what the fire department would ask for is an ox box for a key that could open up anything that was in distress. Mm -hmm. and with this, it's not possible because we don't have a master key or anything. No, right. So they're they're padlocks. Padlocks. Wow, it's to have a key for everybody. Are they padlocks? So just posting yeah. individual the padlocks. contact. Good so bolt cutter. I'm thing sure good bolt cutter. For example, <laughs> if there's a tree falls on it or something, and right. the airplane crashes into it, you have Brent's telephone number or somebody's so call. And the office building, should that, will the fire department be able to gain access to that building? Like, is that where the knock box would be? Yeah, you tell the office building, the fire department really should have access to that. To that to I don't have a problem with that. I'm not that's familiar with the knock box. But. Combustible building. Uh -huh. So, 
They should have the access code to that and some kind of a, I don't know how you lock the building. It's key. I, mean, I don't have a problem giving the fire department a key. Well, if you have a knock box, that's just simply a mailbox that you put a key in and it's locked. The fire department has a key to get into that box to get the key to get into the building. You know? <laughs> Unless you want the door chopped up. <laughs> So we can do that. <laughs> so, so I don't. We don't need to make it a requirement, but I'm no. just going to say fire access. Sure. So that could include the gate and or the office building, and then no outside storage or outdoor big storage. So th those are the uh, conditions that we've come up with. We're we going to get as built plans when they're done, so that no yep. required, required, by the mm -hmm. required by the building code. As built. Required by the building code. All right. Now you got to do one thing here. You got to ask if anybody wants to speak. So I did do that while you were searching, oh, actually, okay. for Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Well, obviously, um, there's nobody here. Nobody <laughs> wanted to speak. <laughs> nobody <laughs> wanted to speak. Or actually, uh, yes, yeah, John, his, uh, Bill Zerubi. I believe that probably <laughs> his wife and his son. Well, I could be wrong. But they are people. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, she didn't want to complain about it. Well, what do you guys think? Would someone like to make a motion this evening? Or do we need more I think I don't have any problem with it. Like I told you, if uh, they had asked for variance, I'd probably give it to them because I think the property is not good for too much else. Okay, and uh, so I'll make the motion. Okay. With all the, with all those together. With all those, and and it's unspoken that the site plan review, conscom, we don't have to include those as yeah. conditions, do we? Then you're going to forward. You're going to forward this to the. They still have to. Anyway. They have to get right. approval there too. Yeah. So they got to get approval there. Yeah. So these plans, plans board is going to come up with traffic control and the plans and uh, exhibits and everything and things like uh, that. We should maintain so that we have them in a the file, uh, so that there's a problem later. And we know what we approved. And should we yeah. should we say subject that the plans date is three, four, one, four. Yeah. That we're approving it? Probably got a number on. They're dated. I think the last one is. We will um, provide you with a, if the planning board requests certain changes, sure. et cetera, well, that's plans a good get point. modified or he comes back and says, everybody's got to find something. Right. Well, right. We don't want you to come back to but us unless it's something substance. Yeah. Yeah. substance. Okay. But we, we would provide you with a final set. Yeah. Um, Those plans are labeled the 75% uh, construction documents under the assumption that, you know, the town might have changes or recommendations, sure. but those are pretty much you know finalized plans. They're not they're not going to change much from what you see now until the do you think we have the CDs. So, write that. So do we need a condition about the plan? No, he's the Dick says he's going to Dick said he's going to get as built plans. The plan right there says not for construction, so they can't submit that for a building permit. They're going to have to have a stamped engineering drawing for that, and then there's going to be with that by the building code, so you're 100% you're safe. Great. Yeah, it's the language I've seen sometimes used to say special permit plan substantially That's good wording. So that allows you to move it away, but it's got to be the same plan. So what was it, substantially? Substantially. Uh, Compliant. That was good. The plan is substantially in the three years are going to run sewer by that day. Does anybody, yeah, uh, right. would anyone like to <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Would it's anyone like to second Bob's motion? Anybody want to second? I, I I'll second. Motion. And all in favor, do you vote? Yes. Yes. Pardon? Yes. And yes for me too. So thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. And we look forward to hearing what happens at the planning board. Yeah. Bill, take your uh, piece of paper with you. So when you, there's come, a, there's when you come to town hall tomorrow, you can get the... the Dan, is there a form in there you all got to sign? Yes, sir. Yeah, make, make sure you sign that tonight. Absolutely, thank you. Okay, so that's what we caught with the last one. We didn't sign it. That's what happened. Did you guys like the extra set? Um, one's enough. We don't need any more. Save them for the planning board. You know, you can charge your client an extra set. <laughs>
you <laughs> because enough will flow you out of. So I, I noticed that you're an engineer in training. Right? Yes, I'm an engineer in training. I'm not a PE yet. So. You, you're probably going to sign the paper for you? I assume it's your father. Yes. Do you think he'll sign it? So how many years <laughs> are you going to your master's yet? Uh, I did. I got my master's degree there as well. And what year did you get out of it? Uh, well, I finished uh, my master's degree in 2012 and uh, my undergrad in 2007. My son went to that program on the board. Yeah. He's right. now the... Uh, he, he was an uh, engineer? Yeah. Uh, what year did he graduate? They shut this thing off. Yeah. We have to close the meeting. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, so would anyone like to make a motion that we adjourn our meeting for the evening? I don't think we have any minutes or anything to review. Make a motion we close the meeting. For proper refreshment. I'll second that. Was there anything? No, we right. have to sign. Oh, just you guys. Bob, are you in favor of closing the Yes. Closing the meeting? Ernie? No. Yes. yes.